I want to welcome everyone who has uh, tuned into our webinar today. My name is John Hancock, and I serve Lewis and Clark as the Associate Dean of Students for Health and Wellness, uh, and also as the Chief Psychologist at the college. Uh, in my portfolio, uh, I directly oversee the counseling service, but uh, I also work closely with our health service and our health promotion programs, uh, and also with our student health insurance program. And today, I hope that many of you were able to join us for the webinar yesterday about wellness issues and also about uh, sort of our institutional response to preparing uh, this fall for COVID. Um, today, we're focused on student health insurance specifically. And so we'll, able, we'll be able to sort of take a deeper dive into the issues related to health insurance. I know there were a lot of questions about health insurance in yesterday's webinar. Uh, joining me in today's webinar, uh, we have uh, Mike Pigou from uh, USI Northwest. Uh, USI Northwest is our vendor for student health insurance. Uh, so Mike and I will be the presenters for today's program. We'll also have uh, Margaret Upton with us. Um, and Margaret Upton is the director of our health service and she'll be here to answer any questions that have to do with sort of the interface between student health insurance and the health service on campus. Um, one thing I want to say about today's webinar is that uh, we are recording this webinar and it will be available on the new student orientation website that probably will be posted in about two days. So the slides and the uh, video audio part of the program will be there as well. So you can find it if you'd like to listen to it again or refer anybody else to the program. Uh, and Henry, if you could uh, put the slides up. Great. And I think we're ready for the next slide. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about um, why, uh, why Lewis and Clark you know, has a health insurance plan and also the difference between the health service and student health insurance. So first of all, in the health service, we have a medical clinic that is on campus. Uh, we provide a, a variety of services in, in that clinic, uh, generally what you would think of as uh, primary care and urgent care for our students who are studying with us on campus. Um, all students can utilize our on-campus health service uh, as well as our counseling service. It doesn't matter what insurance plan they have. So uh, I want to be clear about that. Uh, all of our provider visits in the health service are free. Uh, our providers, uh, we have two uh, nurse practitioners in the health service. Uh, we also have a physician who's with us part-time. Uh, and so the visits with all those folks are free. Uh, the visits with all the counselors and the counseling service are free. Uh, we do have a psychiatrist who's with us part-time as well as some uh, psychiatric resident, a psychiatric fellow. Uh, the psychiatry visits have some relatively modest fees associated with them. Um, but uh, a, a tr the, the point is that in the health service, the primary care, the urgent care that students are going to get, the provider visits are free there for all students. Uh, but we do charge for labs. Uh, we do charge for, we, we dispense a limited amount of medication out of the health service. Uh, sometimes students need equipment, uh, or sometimes we do certain procedures in the health service. Uh, for example, burning off of warts we do, and there are some uh, costs for a few of the procedures that we do in the health service. But a lot of the services there are free, and all students can use them regardless of what health insurance they have. Um, in all of our clinics, we do assess charges for students who no-show uh, without canceling. So if they cancel, there's no charge, but if they just no-show, there is a charge because we can't use that time slot for another student. Uh, and and no-show fees are not covered by any insurance plan, not by the student health insurance plan, or by any other student uh, by any other health insurance plan that a student might have. Um, so so that's a little different. Uh, the differences between the health service and student health insurance. Uh, student health insurance is going to kick in uh, potentially when a student incurs costs at the health service or for anything off campus. Um, now, the health service is an in-network provider with the student health insurance program, right? But the health service is going to be out of network for really all other insurance plans, just so you can think about that um, as you think about, you know, what choices you might want to make. Ultimately, 
we want uh, families and students to be making the best choice for them. The college is not out to make money on our health insurance plan. We really, we really have sort of a degree of distance from this in terms of what plan you want to make. If you choose our student health insurance plan, that's wonderful. We think it's a great plan, great benefits. We'll talk about that today. We think for the, for the benefits you get, the price is a pretty good one. Um, but we know it's not the best choice for all families, and so we want you to make the choice that's best for your family. Um, so we'll answer other questions as we go along today. Uh, next slide, Henry. Um, so why do we have a requirement for student health insurance? Um, I get this question with some frequency. Well, first and foremost, we have a requirement for health insurance because we want to report, uh, support students' health and safety. Um, over the years, I've been working in this uh, field for a long time, and I've seen students, both the medical side and the mental health side of our operation, uh, be reluctant to get needed medical care because they didn't have health insurance benefits that would cover the plan. And they, maybe they were worried about taking on additional financial burden for themselves or their family. They, maybe they were reluctant to get an MRI that they needed. They were reluctant to see a psychiatrist that they needed to see. They were reluctant, um, you know, on campus, we, we provide brief counseling. Uh, brief counseling averages about five sessions for the students who come in. Uh, sometimes students need more than that. But we've had students who were reluctant to get more than that because they didn't want to burden their family with the, the financial debt of, that might be associated with getting extra care or additional care. But it really is needed care. And sometimes it's care that, you know, has the potential to be life-saving care. Let's say in the case of a student who's at risk for suicide or the case of a student who, who has a symptom and let's say, you know, it has the potential to be cancer, but the student doesn't want to, again, incur the burden of the cost. Students who have effective access to healthcare can be healthier and they can be safer. So that's number one reason why we want students to have health insurance of whatever stripe at Lewis and Clark. Um, secondly, we want students to have health insurance because it supports students' academic progress. Uh, students who can get access to healthcare in Portland for things like physical therapy uh, or, uh, or um, uh, you know, ongoing counseling, ongoing psychiatry services, um, you know, imaging studies, whatever it might be, specialty care, people who can get that in Portland are more likely to remain students in Portland, right? And so they can keep up with their academics while they get the care that they need. Uh, and then finally, related to that point, if a student has health care that works for them in Portland, they're less likely to ultimately develop a condition uh, where they have to head home and completely withdraw from the semester, which is a very expensive proposition. It's, it's lo a lost semester for them. Uh, it's a lot of lost tuition money for their family. And so we wanna try to minimize those, those, as much as, those as much as possible. So that's why we have a requirement for health insurance. Next slide, Henry. I, I realize as I'm talking, I didn't introduce Henry. Henry is our master of uh, of the webinar today, and he's entirely behind the scenes. So, um, you know, uh, very appreciative for Henry and his advancing our slides and, and making all the technology happen for today's program. Uh, so um, how it works at Lewis and Clark is that all students are automatically enrolled in the student health insurance plan, and they are billed the uh, fee for the student health insurance plan. Um, but it is easy to waive out of the student health insurance plan if you have alternative health insurance coverage, which meets the college's comparability criteria. So um, what, what are those comparability criteria? We're on the, they're on this slide and you can easily find them on our webpage. So um, this is what you want to look at. If you're thinking about waiving out of our student health insurance plan, your care needs to provide Number one, access to care in Portland or the area where your student is studying. Uh, so if a student is studying abroad, it needs to provide care when the student's abroad. If the student is studying somewhere else, we have some domestic programs sometimes that run. I'm not sure if they're running this fall to Washington, DC or New York, places like that. The, 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 the coverage needs to, to provide care where their student is studying. And it can't be just emergency and urgent care. It really needs to be a range of care. 
So uh, most notably, if you have an out-of-state Medicaid program, uh, that is going to provide emergency care in Portland, but it's not going to provide access to a range of care. So that does mean that your out-of-state Medicaid programs are not going to meet our comparability criteria. Uh, secondly, uh, your, your, your insurance plan needs to provide both inpatient and outpatient mental health benefits. Uh, third, it has to have at least a half a million dollars minimum coverage. Uh, all plans that are ACA compliant are going to meet this criteria. Uh, we set this criteria where we do because we have some plans for international students who are coming in where they might just have half a million dollars in coverage. And so uh, as long as your plan, whether it's a domestic plan or international plan, it has a half a million dollars in coverage, it'll meet our criteria. And finally, the plan has to stay in place for the entire academic year. Uh, next slide, Henry. So if your plan uh, meets those criteria, uh, you can waive out of our plan. And the way to do that is to go to our student health insurance website. And there is the website uh, for our plan, go.lclark.edu forward slash student forward slash health forward slash insurance. You can go to that website and at the very top of the homepage of the website, you can click on a link that will take you to uh, a waiver uh, form that you can fill out. It's pretty easy. Uh, you submit the form. Um, some people have said, you know, uh, how can I really be sure if, if my form has gone through, my waiver has been processed? If, you're, if your waiver is denied, you're going to get a message that your waiver is denied, okay? And it'll be because you said, or your student said, I, I say you, really, the student has to be the one completing the waiver, right? But usually this is done in a partnership with a student and a family member, is my experience. So uh, the person submitting the form will get a, a message that their, their waiver has been denied. And it's usually because they haven't, uh, they've checked a no for one of those previous boxes on that page for comparability criteria. Their coverage doesn't meet one of those criteria. Um, uh, if, uh, if it goes through, which most waivers go through just fine, the thing I would counsel you to do is to watch your students bill and have them watch the bill because the proof in the pudding in this case is really um, whether uh, the charge for student health insurance is removed from the student's bill. So uh, watch that. And what typically will happen is when you submit your waiver, that will go through. Um, the college has a reporting process to our vendor, which is Pacific Source, our, excuse me, our, our student health insurance carrier, Pacific Source. Um, and, um, and then when Pacific Source uh, uh, kind of gets the word from the college, uh, then the charge will be taken off of your student's bill. If the charge for student health insurance, if your waiver has gone through, if you believe you submitted the waiver effectively and the charge has not gone off, off of your student's bill within a few weeks, uh, and certainly when we get into September, if it hasn't gone off by the 1st of September, please be in touch with our student accounts office. Uh, every once in a while, technology doesn't you know, go the way it's supposed to. We have someone who should have had a charge removed and it wasn't. So please be watching your student's bill. And if you submitted a, a waiver uh, and it hasn't been denied, um, then, and, and, the, and the charge still is on your account, um, come September 1st, please reach out to student accounts and, and they'll work with you to get the charge taken off of your, your bill. Uh, one question I get is, what if I have Kaiser HMO coverage? Um, you know, is that a comparable coverage in terms of the college's coverage? Can I waive the student health insurance coverage if I have Kaiser coverage? So the answer to that is uh, maybe, depends. So if you can get guest privileges in Portland with Kaiser of Oregon, uh, then yes, you can, uh, you can waive out of the college's coverage because Kaiser does offer um, coverage in Portland that is does meet our four comparability criteria. You just have to get those guest privileges in place. We do have students who waive out of student health insurance each year and they have the Kaiser coverage. And so that works really well for them and their family. Uh, but at the same time, I want to acknowledge that, um, you know, for when Kaiser delivers their care, they tend to deliver it at Kaiser facilities, right? Uh, and so those Kaiser facilities are some distance from campus. 
Um, what you can do, I, I listed this website here, www.trimet.org. You can go onto that website. You can put in the address of the Kaiser facilities in Portland, and you can get a sense of how long it will take your student to get to those facilities. Um, and you know, imagine you're a student who's feeling ill, and uh, you know maybe you've seen someone in our health service, but they think you need uh, an X-ray or something that we don't do on campus. So they're referring you to a Kaiser facility, and you're having to navigate buses or light rail to get there. It can be a hardship on students who aren't feeling well to get to a Kaiser facility. So I always tell families to check out that trimet.org website, you know, put in the location of the, of the Kaiser facility, put in the campus address, see how long your stake will be student to get there. Of course, you'll need to see if you can get guest privileges with Kaiser. These are all things to think about before you make your final decision to go with your Kaiser coverage and to decline our student health insurance plan. Um, yeah, so those are some things to think about with Kaiser. Um, if what if my plan doesn't quite meet the comparability criteria? So sometimes this arises. Let's say, um, um, let's say you have out-of-state Medicaid and you're going to try to transition to the Oregon Health Plan, which is the version of Oregon's Medicaid program. Uh, but you know that you can't quite get it in place by the enrollment by the by the waiver deadline, which is September 13th. Um, so. Uh, That'd be an example where your plan doesn't quite meet our criteria, but maybe you think you're going to have your, your Medicaid coverage in Oregon in place by October 1st, for example. Uh, or another example that comes up is let's say your employer is having an open enrollment period, and so you'll be able to get coverage in place that meets our criteria come, let's say, October 1st, right? But it's not quite going to be in place in September. So again, your plan doesn't quite meet our comparability criteria, but it almost does. So if you have a situation like that, please email stuhealthinsurance at lclark.edu, explain your circumstances, and we can talk with you about options for potentially processing a waiver for our plan, even though your plan doesn't quite meet our comparability criteria. Uh, we try to be flexible with families. We know your every family situation is different, and we, we do want to try to make this you know, as easy as possible for you, given that we do want all students to have good insurance coverage. Um, and then I think I've actually already addressed the question about out-of-state Medicaid, and that is that it does not meet our college requirements. There is one exception to that, and that is that Washington, the state of Washington Medicaid does meet our requirements because students can hypothetically cross the river into Washington to get care there in Vancouver or adjacent suburbs in Washington. But I would caution you about that because uh, getting to Washington from campus is, is quite a trip. And so even though it technically meets the college's criteria for uh, comparability, um, the Apple Care does uh, in the state of Washington, um, it's really hard to get that care. So choose that option carefully if you choose to go that way. Uh, next slide, Henry. Uh, so uh, some key points to remember before I wrap up. Uh, all students are automatically enrolled in and charged for the Lewis and Clark Student Health Insurance Plan. Uh, the cost of that coverage is $1,760 per semester. Uh, so that is charged twice a year in the fall and in the spring. Summer coverage is included when you pay the spring premium. So for a total of uh, $1,760 times two, you do get 12 months of uninterrupted coverage, and that can be renewed each year that the student is enrolled in classes. Uh, if a student has comparable insurance uh, and wants to decline the enrollment in the plan, they must complete the online waiver by September 13th. Uh, this is their only chance in the academic year to decline enrollment. Um, the, the only exceptions we make are for students who are participating in an overseas or off-campus program. We do allow mid-year waivers for them. Uh, we allow also uh, you know, changes in, in the middle of a year for a person who has a qualifying life event. So um, you know, let's say um, a family has waived our insurance coverage because uh, they had uh, the student had a, a parent with a job that had good insurance that met our comparability criteria. And all of a sudden, 
the family situation changes and there's a loss of employment and the student no longer has insurance. So that's going to be a qualifying life event. And that's a situation where we can make a mid-year adjustment and get the student onto our plan mid-year uh, or actually at, at different times during the year. So, um, but unless the student meets one of these criteria, they only get one chance each year to complete the waiver. And so it has to be done by September 13th. Uh, and if it's not done by September 13th, then students are going to wind up paying, you know, $3,520 for coverage for the year. And while, you know, the plan's a good plan and it's a solid plan, and I think it's, it's a very good plan, actually, and, and, is a, and a well-priced plan for the benefits it offers, the last thing I want is for any student to be charged that much money for a health insurance plan that they do not need because they have other coverage. So please be working with your student to remind them of that September 13th deadline and be sure that if you want your family to be waiving out of health insurance coverage this year, that your student completes the online waiver by September 13th. Next slide, Henry. Um, students must complete that waiver at the start of every academic year, not just their first year, uh, because they are enrolled in and charged for student health insurance every year. So if you complete the waiver every year, you'll be waived out and you won't have to pay that money each year. Um, and finally, again, if a student does lose their coverage through, during the year, uh, they can be added to the student health insurance plan for a prorated amount. Please contact student and departmental account services if that's an issue for you. Uh, next slide, Henry. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Mike Pigou. Uh, Mike is our uh, uh, representative from USI Northwest, the, our sort of a broker who works with our student health insurance plan. Mike will describe the benefits of the plan and some other things that you all need to know. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, John. Uh, I do see we have a couple of questions. Uh, one, you, you already answered uh, for coverage on the summer months, but one, John, was the uh, range of fees and types of procedures and tests that can be done at the on-campus health service. Um, is that something you could briefly touch on before I get going? Yeah, so actually, I'm gonna see if we can have Margaret um, unmute herself and uh, and join us video to answer that question. Margaret, are you available for that question? Sure. Um, the types of procedures and fees are um, medications are very um, limited, but they are very reasonable. We do it pretty much at cost. Um, so they're ranging about 15 to 20 dollars per prescription that we have. We carry antibiotics, antifungals, uh, steroids. We have some um, inhalers. So those are kind of the medication type of things we have. For procedures, we do, um, as John had mentioned, we do the um, freezing of warts. We do um, INDs. Um, so those are kind of some of the procedures we do and fees for that range from, I think it's like, uh, 15 to $30 range for the procedures. Um, we don't do x-rays or MRIs on campus. Um, we send out for that. So your, whatever insurance you would have would be built for those type of, uh, procedures. I hope that's enough. If not, I can try and go. Oh, also for vaccinations, um, there we those are pretty much at cost too, with a little bit of fee added for supplies. Um, so we do travel vaccines. Um, we also do allergy injections, and there's a small fee for that. I think I think it's ranging ten to fifteen dollars per visit. They're great, thank you. All right, so I'll get started here. Um, so I'm gonna to touch on a few things related to the student health insurance plan for the 2021-2022 academic year. Um, so I'll cover the cost, kind of key benefits, uh, the Pacific Source Network and network partners, um, what is covered 
at the health service um, on the plan, some COVID-19 uh, benefits and coverage updates, uh, cover a couple of frequently asked questions, and then share some uh, helpful links for the Pacific Source resources and web pages that they have. So as John said, the cost um, is split by semester. So the fall semester will run from 8.15.21 through 12.31.21 at that $1,760. And then the spring semester inclusive of summer uh, runs all the way through uh, to August 14th, 2022. Uh, in terms of the benefits, like John said, it is a very rich plan. Um, we, we want to provide strong benefits for those uh, students that do need to jump on the Lewis and Clark student health insurance. So the deductible is split um, into in-network and out-of-network. Uh, so the in-network deductible uh, is $500 and $900 for the out-of-network providers. The out-of-pocket maximum for in-network is $3,500 and 10,500 for out of network providers. And the plan maximum is unlimited, which is, which is great. Uh, Henry, can we get next slide, please? Uh, here are some, some key benefits which are taken from the highlight sheet, which is uh, posted online. Uh, but things like routine physicals, uh, wellness visits, immunizations for your in network providers, um, that's zero dollars for the member and no deductible. Whereas if you take a look at the out of network providers, um, you know, that cost is after the deductible and then a 40% uh, co-insurance amount. So quite a difference in terms of your out of pocket costs um, if you were to go out of network. For office visits and urgent care visits, as you can see, it's a no deductible and a $20 copay. Uh, and that's the same for mental health and chemical dependency office visits, which is great. And that's both in and out of network. Um, specialist visits, it's the $40 copay. And if you want to take a look at uh, diagnostic um, and labs, the member will pay nothing um, up to the first $400. Then from $401 on, uh, it'll be responsible for 20% after that deductible is met, that $500 deductible is met. Uh, prescription drugs are also covered on the student health insurance plan. Uh, they're tiered out um, one, two, three, and specialty. And you can see uh, the copay associated with each. Uh, it's $15, 30, 15, 75. Um, and once again, all eligible expenses incurred at the health center uh, are covered at 100% with no deductible. Uh, next slide, please, Henry. So here we have the Pacific Source Network. So it's called Voyager uh, for our student health plan. And the, the network is for Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. And if you're outside of these four states, um, you will use a different network because Pacific Source needs to partner um, and for example, if you were to go to Alaska uh, on summer break, or perhaps you live there and going back for, for winter break, uh, you'd utilize first choice. And outside of Alaska, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, um, and Washington, you'd use first health network. Um, we've included a link here to the Pacific Source Find a Doctor page, which is, which is a great tool um, where you can select the area that you are in and you can drill down to find a facility or doctor um, within a mile or two uh, from where you are um, or the type of doctor or facility you'd like to go to. Uh, and while Pacific Source does update this frequently, uh, you know, doctors are going in and out of network um, can be quite quite frequently. So we always recommend that you call ahead of time just to confirm that both uh, the doctor and the facility are in network with Voyager or First Health or First Choice. Uh, Henry, next slide, please. So Lewis and Clark Health Service. So what's covered under the student health plan? 
again, services are 100%, um, but also lab referrals. So Lewis and Clark has a partnership with Quest Labs. Um, and then also rapid testing uh, is covered at 100%. And the way in which this works is the health center, uh, sorry, the health service uh, charges a bill to your student student account, and then they can access a walkout statement uh, through their health information portal. And if they submit that to Pacific Source, they will reimburse um, the student at 100%. Henry, next slide, please. So here's an update on the COVID-19 benefits. So they are extended through December 31st and they could be extended again. Uh, it really just depends um, on, on how what is happening with COVID at that time. So I'd imagine we'll get an update at some point in November uh, to see if they're extended into uh, 2022. Um, teledoc visits for any diagnosis uh, are covered at a $0 copay. Uh, COVID testing and diagnostic services are also covered at a $0 member cost share for any in-network provider. Um, coverage includes both diagnostic and antibody testing. Um, and again, diagnostic services can be in telehealth, in-person, outpatient or inpatient. Um, as long as the diagnosis uh, has COVID on the claim, uh, it will be paid at 100% for in-network providers. Um, it's also paid at 100% for out-of-network providers, but there could be balanced billing, um, which is the difference between the billed amount and what is allowed. And what that means is really what is uh, acceptable um, to the insurance company. Um, if it's outside of that range, there, the member can be responsible uh, for that difference. And Pacific Source does do a great job uh, updating uh, on their COVID blog. So we've, we've shared that link um, on the slide deck for you as well. Henry, next slide, please. Thank you. So here are a few FAQs. Um, some of these questions have been answered, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout the slides, but uh, just providing the information in, in a different way. So we'll go over a few of them. Uh, is the student health insurance comprehensive? And as John said, it is an ACA compliant plan. Uh, and if, if you are familiar with the metal levels for ACA plans, um, it is considered a platinum, platinum level plan. Uh, coverage does last for 12 months, um, which, which is great. Uh, it extends through the summer. And that includes if, if your student is graduating, um, you know, regardless, it runs through to August 14th. And then some more information on the deductibles and copays. Um, again, the, the deductibles um, and accumulate separately for in and out of network. Uh, so if you met that $500 deductible in network, but then through an out of network provider, you would potentially still have to pay up towards the $900 before the uh, co-insurance would kick in. And then the co-pays and co-insurance do vary by service. So um, for full details, you can access the pacificsource.com uh, student health Lewis and Clark webpage. And Henry, if you go next slide, we have a range of them here. So the top, top link takes you to the homepage where you can access all of these other links, uh, which is the highlight sheet, which is a, a basic overview of the cost and coverage, the summary of benefits, a um, little more in depth. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, the medical guide is, is like the student handbook. Uh, it's a rather large document, um, but provides everything you could really need um, as well as uh, information on who to contact should any questions come up. Pacific Source Customer Service does a great job um, and they're always very helpful. And I do see a couple more questions. So Jeremy, uh, yes, if you do move to your home state for the summer, um, there is coverage, uh, depending where that is. It, coverage may be under the first health network um, or first choice, or it may still be Voyager. So 
uh, just recommend checking with the provider or facility that you're going to see that they do cover um, or are a network with whatever network you would be on. Um, I hope that answers your question. And then John. Um, with Mike. Yeah, th th thank you, Mike, for, for that review. Uh, I saw another question for you, Mike, that might be appropriate. I mean, uh, for x-rays and MRI orders, are they covered by the Lewis and Clark Health Insurance? Uh, yes, they are. They are covered. That be that benefit is under the advanced uh, imaging benefit. Great. Um, I don't recall. If we go back, we can see the. Uh, keep going back, Henry. A few more. Keep going. One more. Yes, yeah, so it'd be after the deductible at twenty percent uh, for advanced imaging. Uh, so, as I look at the the questions here, um, I'm looking at a question. Uh, Jeremy submitted: uh, If we have a family plan at home, uh, will he get removed, or can we still use his home coverage in our home state? So, so I think I'm going to try to tag team this question with Mike um, and say that I do think it's important. I've worked with lots of families over my time at Lewis and Clark. I've been here almost 14 years now. And um, I've worked with many families who found our, our insurance plan to be very portable uh, because it does tap into those national networks. And so they can access uh, the care that they need both here in Portland and also where their student is for, let's say the summer, if they are returning home for the summer. Um, but there have been a couple exceptions where, you know, a student maybe lives in a very rural or remote part of a state and uh, the first choice, first health networks really don't extend to those areas as well. So I do think I, I encourage all families to like if you're if you're looking between two insurance products, such as the student health insurance plan and then maybe some employer based plan or other plan that you're considering to look at the provider networks that your student will be able to access both uh, you know, where you live and in Portland under both plans. Because we can't really promise that it's gonna work in a particular town in any particular place, but we can say it is very portable. It does provide you know, benefits across the country and the First Choice and First Health Networks are very robust. Um, I wasn't sure, Jeremy, if your question gets at this issue about um, uh, you know, students can be covered under two plans at the same time. The student health insurance plan, once it's in place, would be the primary plan, and then any other plan would be secondary. Uh, Mike, is there anything else you would want to say in response to this question? No, I think you covered it, John. I think that's great. Okay, great. Um, and let's see. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and continue with my last slide here. And then we'll come back around to the rest of the questions. Um, and I, I do appreciate everybody who's asking questions. These are great questions to ask. Um, uh, Henry, could we go back to the slides? Okay, and we're gonna go to the very last slide, Henry, or last or next to the last slide. Great, thank you. So um, how can you support your student about health insurance issues? So um, here's what I think the process looks like. And I, I have two children. Uh, one of them's in college currently. One of them just finished with graduate school. Um, and uh, for both of them, I did some things that I've, I've sort of learned from being an insider in college health from all these years. So as you saw with our student health insurance plan and with just about all the insurance plans that you'll find in the U.S., you get a significant benefit if you stay in network with the health insurance plan, right? So it is important to research um, uh, if you're sending your student to Lewis and Clark and they have questions about accessing uh, the student health insurance plan, we have staff who can help them with their questions about student health insurance. 
But what often happens is a student who gets a referral off campus for care or something, they're not used to thinking about insurance. And so they may not keep in mind that it's better to stay in network or not. Uh, they may not understand exactly how to work with their parents' plan if they're on a, a the the you know a employer plan through their uh, family member. Uh, they might not understand how to research even who's in network or out of network. So um, as you as you consider our plan, student health insurance plan versus your plan, I would recommend researching in network hospitals, in network urgent cares, in network pharmacies near campus, and and making the decision about which plan you choose based to some degree on you know, the provider network it offers and the accessibility of that provider network to campus. And if you're going to stay with uh, your employer-based plan or some other health insurance plan, I would take a little time with your student before they come to Portland, and I would write down on a piece of paper or send it to them in an email or somehow get it in the, to the notes section of their phone, the urgent cares that are in network that are in some proximity to campus the in-network hospitals, the in-network pharmacies, so that when your student needs care, they know where to go. I can speak from experience and say that uh, uh, one of my student college students um, had a situation arise and the health service on their campus was closed uh, and it was headed into a weekend. And because we had done this research in advance, uh, my, my daughter knew exactly which urgent care to go to that was not terribly far from campus and it was in-network. So this is a really good thing to think through with your students, uh, because you know honestly we always let, all of us like to save a little money when it comes to healthcare, and staying in network is best, better than going out of network. And again, students don't often think of these things. So that's one important thing you can do before your student heads off to to college. Uh, and the same is true of pharmacies as well. Um, it's important to stay in network with pharmacies if you want to save some money, so you can research that with your student before they leave. Second thing, very simple. Uh, make sure your student understands, if, if they're not going to be on our plan, make sure they understand uh, that they need a, an insurance card uh, to sort of uh, access healthcare and uh, make sure they have that card and, and they bring a copy with them when they come to Lewis and Clark. If they're going to be on the student health insurance plan, they will be able to access an online insurance card uh, very easily. Uh, and, uh, and that's available through our health insurance website by clicking on certain links. Um, be sure, be clear with your student about your expectations for managing insurance issues. So, for example, who is responsible for waiving the student health insurance coverage? Are you going to put that burden on your student alone? Um, it, are you going to help them with that? Um, what if they don't waive the plan by September 13th? Because if they don't waive the plan by September 3rd, it's going to be a big financial charge to, to the student and to their family. And I've seen that bring up significant conflict in the family before. So just be clear with your student about who's in charge of dealing with insurance issues, about choosing in-network providers, about, um, about waiving the insurance plan if you don't want our insurance plan. It's an important conversation to have. And finally, of course, if your family doesn't want to enroll in the student health insurance program, again, I, I hope you saw from Mike's slides all, and all of that information is on the Student Health Insurance website. Uh, if you don't want our plan, which is a good plan, your student must complete the waiver by September 13th. Next slide, Henry. Great. And so we're back to the beginning. And so we're going to go back to all the questions that you all submitted. Um, and I will uh, start reading these now. Mike, I don't know if you had a chance to read these, if there are any that you want to start with. I'm uh, just reading them now, John, sorry. Sure, no, that's okay. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead and dive in with, with some. Well, actually, Margaret, um, let's give you a chance to answer some of these. Uh, Margaret, how about this one? Um, will Lewis and Clark help the student with medical help? And I think this means probably getting help off campus. We've reviewed you know, the health service offers, again, sort of urgent care and primary care will help students who are on campus. But what about helping students get off campus care? Sure, we have referral lists for specialists or for other providers that we help students 
um, connect with and we can assist them in getting appointments, usually more rapidly than they can do themselves. The one thing we do ask students is that they know um, that a provider is in their network if they are not with the student health insurance. Um, Mike, how about this one? Uh, is there a list of nearby to Lewis and Clark in-network Pacific source facilities such as hospitals, urgent cares, and pharmacies? Um, also, since my daughter has no car, will they take them to an in-network urgent care facility in an emergency? Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll take this one first, Mike, and then maybe uh, you can jump on to anything you might want to add. Um, so, so uh, you know, in, an, in, a, in a true medical emergency, hospital, uh, excuse me, college staff, are going to be you know, engaging uh, emergency medical uh, response systems so that an ambulance comes to campus and provides ambulance support to get a student to uh, an emergency department at one of our local hospitals. So that's definitely an option. Um, uh, we, we don't provide any other uh, sort of transportation to healthcare facilities for students. Um, there are ways students get to those facilities. Sometimes they have a friend who has a car. If it's not an, an emergency that requires an ambulance transport, um, we have, um, there's a system with radio cabs set up uh, where students can uh, uh, get a cab to a medical facility and have that billed to their student account. Uh, students do use rideshare uh, programs as well to get to uh, medical care, both emergency departments. When it's, when they decide they want emergency care, but it's not maybe a true emergency. Um, so uh, that they'll, they'll use that. So those are the different ways. We also have um, um, uh, Zoom, uh, Zipcar, which is a sort of an hourly car rental program students can sign up for, and they can use that to get to medical appointments, uh, but that's more of on a reservation basis. So it's not always the best in, in an urgent sort of situation. Um, in terms of if there's a list of nearby to Lewis and Clark in-network Pacific source facilities, such as hospitals, urgent cares, and pharmacies, your best resource for that is going to be the Pacific source website. As Mike mentioned earlier, um, the, the, not so much with hospitals, uh, but especially with providers' offices, um, those can go in and out of network with any given insurance plan uh, you know, throughout a 12-month year. So uh, I think it's really important that uh, you know, families sit down with their student and actually show them the insurance website, whether it's the Pacific Source website that Mike referenced and the find a doc feature, or if you're staying with a different insurance plan, uh, wherever that sort of find a facility feature is on your plan. Um, I can say that we have, uh, there was another question about urgent care centers close to campus uh, that are in network with student health insurance. So for example, um, uh, Zoom Care uh, is in network with our student health insurance plan. Um, the Legacy Go Health system is also in network with our insurance plan. They offer urgent care centers around town. Um, in terms of pharmacies, there's a, a Safeway pharmacy on Barber Boulevard and a, and a Fred Meyer pharmacy on Barber Boulevard. Those are close to campus as well. Um, many hospitals in Portland are in network with Lewis and Clark, including Oregon Health and Sciences University, um, is in network with our student health insurance plan. So there are a lot of facilities that are in network, but it's always best if a student checks before they go, because whatever I tell you today, uh, in nine months, maybe in May or something, when your student might want to access care, uh, you know, things might have changed by then. So I always encourage students to know that find a doc feature and, and use it to be sure. Uh, Mike, I, I kind of gave a long answer to that, but is there anything else that you would add on to those couple of answers that I gave? No, I think you, you nailed the jump. That's what I would say. Great. Um, I think we've answered this other question. If your student doesn't know what doctor to visit, does Lewis and Clark help with referrals? Absolutely. Our health service can assist with that and as can counseling service staff around mental health referrals. Um, and John, just on the pharmacies too, I believe Rite Aid and Walgreens are also included. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. Um, let's see. There's a, there's a, I, I think we've answered most of the questions here. There is a question about billing. Um, uh, 
I believe the first tuition payment is due in a week or two. Uh, you say the waiver takes several weeks to go into effect. How to handle the bill? Mike, I, I know oftentimes when we do this webinar each summer, um, well, honestly, uh, before COVID, we did this in person uh, in August, but the last two years we've done it as a webinar. So we've tended to have someone from our student accounts office who can kind of talk to the logistics of how the, the waivers get processed and how quickly charges get reversed from bills. Can you speak to that issue? I mean, I can also talk about how to handle payment of the bill a little bit myself since we don't have someone from student accounts today. But can you talk a little bit about when, it, when a waiver is, is submitted, how quickly the charge might be expected to come off the bill? Yeah, so in, in terms of the charge coming off, I'm, I'm not sure. I believe it's usually around a week, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for the charge to come off. Um, but in a situation where tuition's due, my understanding is you can pay uh, the fee minus the student health, and it would just be placed as a hold on your account until um, student accounts sees the waiver come through and process it. Thank, thank you, Mike. Um, so I, I do want to acknowledge sometimes families, um, you know, you do have them technically until September 13th, which is the waiver deadline, right? To sort of make your final commitment about whether you want to go with the student health insurance plan or not, because you can spend your time researching your plan or other plans. And then ultimately, as long as you file the waiver by September 13th, uh, you can waive enrollment in our plan. So, um, but during that time, the bill for student health insurance, until the waiver goes through, the charge is gonna be on your student account. Um, if you pay that, go ahead and pay that. Uh, but then ultimately waive out of it, the college will give you a refund for the full uh, student health insurance premium. Um, if you are unsure and you sort of are, are getting billed and you know you, you don't wanna do that, you don't wanna go with the refund possibility, I would encourage you to reach, reach out to the student accounts office and they can tell you sort of their process about, uh, I think, I think, but I don't wanna say this for a fact, I think it's possible to pay your full balance except for the student health insurance plan and then pay that a bit later when you're sure of your commitment to the plan. But uh, don't take my word for sure on that. If, if that. if that option is appealing to you, I would contact student and departmental accounts directly and they can give you guidance about that. So those are some different ways to navigate the payment of the student health insurance bill until such time as you are 100% sure of what your choice is going to be. I'm just scanning the questions to see if anything else has arised. I think we've answered the questions that I see. Uh, Margaret or, or Mike, do you see any questions that we've lost unanswered here? Or is there anything else that you'd like to add as we wrap up? No, I think we got them all. All right. Well, um, I want to thank Mike for joining us today. I want to thank Margaret also. Uh, thanks to Henry for coordinating. I want to thank all of you, our, uh, our listeners, for dialing in and, and uh, listening today. If you have any questions about student health insurance, our website is a great resource. There are lots of answers there. And then also, we do have our email account, stuhealthinsurance at elkclark.edu. So I encourage you to email any follow-up questions you have there, and we'll do our best to answer them in a timely fashion. Thank you all uh, for uh, tuning in today, and we really look forward to welcoming your students to campus later this month. Bye-bye. Actually, John. Oh, yes, Margaret, yes. Uh, there is a new question, and oh, I think it's you. for Mike, and it's talking about covering dental or vision. Okay, yes, so uh, the plan does cover dental and vision, but it's pediatric dental and vision, so it's only for members through age 18. So once they turn 19, um, there is no dental uh, or vision benefit unless uh, it fell under a medical uh, benefit like impacted wisdom teeth, <clears throat> excuse me, or something like that. Um, so only through age 18. We do, we do have on our website, we have a link that will provide you some, um, some kind of direction in accessing some related uh, insurance products, Mike. I think that's still true where uh, folks can get either discounted vision services or
can actually purchase dental coverage separately. I believe that's still true. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, I believe you can still do that. Yeah. Yes, yes, but that's not included in the student health insurance plan that we've talked about today. But check out our website if you'd like to see more about that. Great, thanks for catching that question, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now I think my sign off is, is for real. So uh, again, we look forward to having your students with us in a few weeks and thanks to everybody for tuning in today. Bye-bye.